in the last lecture we added the validation pipe globally so if i go to vs code here in the main.ts file we are adding this validation pipe globally and what that simply means is now this validation pipe will be applied for each incoming request so it will be applied on each controller method which is going to handle an incoming request now for this validation pipe we can also specify some configuration options for that to this validation pipe we need to pass an object and in that object we can specify the configuration options so let's see some of the configuration options which we can set for this validation pipe so for now let me first remove this object from here okay let's save this file and let's go to usercontroller.ts and what we will do is here before we are sending the response let's also go ahead and let's log the user object basically the user object which we are going to receive in the request body so that we are sending to this user parameter so let's go ahead and let's log that user parameter let's save the changes here let's make sure that this application has been recompiled and it is re-executing as you can see it has re-executed let's go to postman and from here let's make a request so when we have made the request there was no validation error and that's why we received this response a new user has been created now if you go to command prompt there you will see that that same object has been logged here okay so so far so good now let's go back to postman and let's do one more thing let's add one more property here and let's add maybe age property now this age property is not present in the dto which we have created if i go to vs code there if we go to create user dto you will not see any age property here in this dto okay we have id name gender email and is married property we do not have any age property but if i make this request you will see that the request went through and we received this response a new user has been created and if we go to command prompt there you will see that that object where we have also specified the age property has been logged here so this object is not matching this create user dto but still the request went through there was no validation error and the user was created and this is what we want to avoid why because if we allow this then someone can send some malicious data with the request and we don't want that to happen and to avoid this what we can do is to this validation pipe we can pass an object and there we are going to specify a configuration option and that is whitelist here we want to set whitelist to true now what it will do is it will make sure that the data which is coming with the request it does not carry any extra property to the controller so for example when we are making a request we are specifying this extra age property which is not present in the dto so now what will happen is since we have set this whitelist to true before the request reaches the controller so before the request is reaching this controller this option will whitelist only those properties from this object which is present in the dto and it will ignore any extra property any extra property will not be passed to the controller let's see that so let's go back and let's save the changes and let's make sure that the application has been recompiled so as you can see it has recompiled now in this user object we are also specifying the age but inside the controller when we are logging this user object if i go ahead and if i make the request you will see that that object only has name email and gender property it has ignored this age property but it has also ignored the id and is married property so that's because on this id and is married property we are not using any validator decorator so on this is married let's go ahead and let's use a validator and let's say is boolean so this is married should be a boolean value and on this id let's go ahead and let's use is number so this id should be a numeric value okay with this let's save the changes 
let's make sure that the application has been recompiled so it is recompiling and now let's go back to postman and let's make that request again let's go to command prompt and now you will see id name email gender and is married property has been there in that object which is assigned to this user parameter but in that object we do not see any extra property this age property so in this way this whitelist option which we are passing to this validation pipe it is going to ignore any extra property which we specify in the request body now here as you can see this age property has been ignored but we are not getting any error here now what we want is if there is any extra property in the request body which is not supposed to be there in that case we also want nest.js to throw an error okay and for that we have another option and that option is forbid non whitelisted and let's set it to true again and now what will happen is if we are specifying any extra property in the request body then this option here it is going to forbid any property that is being sent along with the request and it throws back an error and it will not even process the request in that case so here when this create user dto will validate this user object if in this user it finds any extra property which is not supposed to be there which is not present in this create user dto in that case that request will not be even passed to the controller from the validation pipe itself the error will be thrown so if i save the changes now again let's make sure that the application has recompiled let's go back to postman and now if we make a request with an extra property now we should get an error so if i click on the send button you see we have an error and it says property age should not exist and if i go to command prompt there you will not see any user object logged because now the request did not even reach to this controller method from here itself since the validation failed the validation pipe returned an error and the request was not forwarded to the controller method all right and finally one more thing which i want to mention here is here we are specifying the type of this user as create user dto so we assume that the data the value which we are going to receive for this user parameter here it will be of type create user dto but let's see if that's the case for that let's log the type of user just to check what is the type of this user value let's save the changes let's go to postman from there let's remove this age property so that we can avoid any errors and let's send the request all right let's remove this comma also and now let's send the request so the request has been sent and we can see this response a new user has been created and let's go to command prompt and there you will see that the type of user is object it is not create user dto it is object and let's also check if this user is an instance of this create user dto for that we are going to use the instance of operator and we want to check if this user is an instance of create user dto let's save the changes again let's go back to postman and let's make the request again and now if we go back to the command prompt they will see that it is false that means this user here it is not an instance of create user dto but what we want is we want this user to be an instance of this create user dto instead of setting its type as object its type should be create user dto and to do that what we need to do is we can set another property here another configuration which is transform and we want to transform this to true this simply means that whatever dto we are using for that validation pipe in this example we are using this create user dto for validating this user data so what this transform will do is it will make sure that the data which is being assigned to this user that is an instance of this create user dto and with this if we save the changes 
let's also save this main.ts file let's go to postman let's make a request so the request has been sent and it has returned us this response now let's go to command prompt and now you can see that the instance of is returning true so now this expression here it is returning true that means this user is an instance of create user dto okay so in this way for this validation pipe here we have set some configuration options and using these configurations the request data is being validated and it is being transformed this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day